Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here. Now, one ship from the Star Wars universe that is often cited as a fan favourite is Boba Fett's KSE Fire Spray, the Slave One. Personally, I've never much cared for the design myself, as I feel that the ship is somewhat over-engineered and features a number of easily avoidable flaws. Normally, I'm a fan of vertically-oriented spacecraft, particularly the B-Wing. It's a welcome step away from the planes in space aesthetic, and it allows for some really interesting and unorthodox designs. But where the B-Wing changes changes to a horizontal configuration before landing, the Slave 1 lands directly on its aft hull, reorienting its cockpit interior to maintain standard gravity. The whole ship seems to have been constructed with this method of landing in mind, and the result is a frankly enormous aft silhouette that presents a serious weakness in combat. Silhouettes are one of the most important elements of dogfighting. Anyone who's played Battlefront will know that a Y-Wing is far easier to shoot down when it starts to pull away and exposes its wide dorsal frame. The Slave Slave 1 is the opposite. Rather than briefly exposing a large silhouette when it turns, the ship's aft is its biggest target, meaning that any fighter that can remain in the Slave 1's shadow can continually pour weapons fire into the ship for extended periods. And no matter how durable the fire spray is, no small ship can endure such punishment for long. The fire spray also carries a number of sleeping bunks, which can only be used when the ship is in its landed configuration. This removes almost all the advantages of onboard living quarters making them useless during extended voyages and available only when planet-side sleeping arrangements are likely available. As the fire spray was expressly designed as a prison enforcement vessel, the ship also carries a number of holding cells, but given their placement, I can only assume that any prisoners inside them are violently thrown around the compartment whenever the ship reorients to land or take off. While I am certain that this wouldn't bother Boba Fett too much, it does seem odd that the original designers never caught on to this problem. I did briefly try and come up with a redesign of the Slave 1 that would remove some of its problems, but frankly the end result was no longer recognisable as a fire spray. More of a standard, horizontally oriented heavy fighter, like Zuckus and Forlom's Mist Hunter. Please let me know in the comments if you think my judgement of the Slave 1 is too harsh, and if you'd like to see me cover any of the famous Bounty Hunter ships on my main Space Dock series. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off.